Calling something the ZX Spectrum's greatest first-person shooter might sound a little, well, odd to some people, or even ridiculous. Why not call something the Specky's greatest virtual reality game, or the Specky's greatest online battle royale-based MMORPG? After all, I'm sure that the idea of an FPS on the Spectrum is just as preposterous for some people as games in those genres would be. But while the field of first-person games on the Specky is admittedly quite thin on the ground, this title isn't actually clickbait. There is a game that's worth showing off, something that's most definitely playable and worthy of an examination. Not just a purely technical curiosity. It's definitely worth the trouble to have a look at a game by a man named Oleg Origin called quite simply The Dark, and to see how someone created an FPS on the 48K ZX Spectrum that was, shockingly, actually playable as well as being technically very decent. You may well be curious to see that The Dark is something of an original title, rather than an attempt to convert Doom to the ZX Spectrum. Indeed, you may well have seen the odd attempt at a version of Doom on the Specky on a YouTube video here and there. All of these versions, as well as the game we're covering, are from the mid-late 90s and are of Eastern European origin, mostly Russia and a little bit of Ukraine. Some of them have cool colours and music going for them, but they do tend to fall more within the technical curio category as opposed to being something more playable, usually only being a few minutes long at most. Also, they tend to work better with beefed up unofficial Russian speckies that won things like TR DOS and what have you, like the Pentagon. One big difference between Doom clones like this and Oleg Origin's The Dark is that the Dark runs on a bog standard 48k spectrum without any problems. Also, it's a full game with eight beefy levels. The game, as mentioned, is originally a mid late 90s release. It came out in 1997 on a self released compilation by Origin called well, 1997. You can also find a couple of other games here, but The Dark is the main one. Funnily enough, it also started out life as a take on a more famous FPS. Originally, it was called Quake, before acquiring its more unique identity. The original Quake release from 1997 is a bit of a hazy one. Again, this one falls more into the technical curio category of the other FPS attempts, with more direct tributes to the contemporary FPSs of the time, and other things like, um, well, a garbled bit of speech at the start. It also doesn't run particularly well, and the graphics aren't quite there yet. It certainly got a bit of attention at the time, but really it would take another 20 years before the game made its mark outside of the Eastern European brew specky scene. In 2017, Oleg Origin went back to his old specky FPS and re-released it as The Dark, giving it a considerable clean-up in the process. This version runs a fair deal smoother, removes things like the Quake logos that are everywhere, and the graphics have been given a bit of a boost too. And the game attracted a fair bit of attention from the whole of the specky world and even a little bit beyond. People were certainly curious to see a classic corridor style FPS running this well on a frickin' spectrum. The release that I'm mainly using for this video however is from 2021. The Dark Redux is the definitive and presumably final release for the game and it's been made in collaboration with Zosia the world's hottest specky group, and the ones responsible for various staggering bits of code you may have seen lately on the system, games like Valley of Rains, Travel Through Time, and Angels. The Redux release gets another little glow up with a far improved interface, an even more impressive graphical sheen, and the addition of a prequel of sorts that we'll look at after the main game. All in all, certainly worth a look. As with all of Zosia's games, physical box versions are available, but they're free to download from their website if you just want a tape image. While the game itself doesn't have a soundtrack, there are a couple of free songs available on Zosia's Bandcamp in mod or original AY versions that are meant to be played alongside the game in your player of choice. Today's video is affiliated with First Person Shooter, the brand new documentary by Creator VC detailing the history of the first person shooter genre. Over three hours long, featuring dozens of interviews with gaming legends, the documentary is now entering its post-production phase and a new campaign is on Indiegogo. Click the link in the description and the comments to know more and we thank them for their support in today's video. 
The game itself is a fantasy-based FPS where you play as Alexander, son of a woman named Jane who lived in the Land of Winds before Dark Forces took over and killed most of the residents. When you come of age you resolve to take back your homeland, grabbing your trusty trident and a gun and sitting to work. Simple enough plot but told with a very effective introduction, certainly a pretty good one for the specy. As stated, the style of the dark is very much that of a classic corridor FPS. As far as technical quality goes, what we are seeing here is amazing. The dark runs pretty damn quickly and the graphics are very good. The game is virtually entirely built out of 8x8 squares. Naturally there's plenty of black borders on display, meaning there's a good reason as to why the whole game takes place at night. This does allow the game to throw quite a few enemies at you. This isn't just something where you'll be fighting one or two enemies at a time, and indeed there will be quite a few big hordes sent in your direction. All of this happens without the game really slowing down at all, and it once again must be stressed that this is all on a bog standard 48k spectrum with no tricks or boosts or anything whatsoever. That's an absolutely awesome achievement, no matter which way you slice it. The game isn't even freaking multi-load, it sticks everything onto the specy during the very first load. Pretty incredible that. The game can be pretty tough, you do only have two weapons and the trident is only really useful in a serious pinch. The gun starts with no ammo but you can find boxes of bullets if you have a hunt around for them, however they aren't exactly plentiful. It's quite important to pick your fights, if you can avoid certain enemies it's best to do so as if you go around trying to shoot everything you're going to run out of bullets pretty fast. Part of this is down to the controls, because of the 8x8 nature of the game, alignment can be a little tricky at times, especially from distance, and you'll miss a fair few shots. Indeed it can at first be a little tricky to line up your movement in order to collect items efficiently. This is something you have to get a bit used to, another foible of the game's graphics. It's a little funky, but I'm not sure if there's any other real way to make a fast moving FPS like this one on the Spectrum other than the method that Olega Region went with, especially on the standard hardware. You kind of have to get used to it. Most of the enemies are these speedy lizard type things that move back and forth, not necessarily tracking you, but they'll usually come in hordes. Three shots is enough to deal with them, but they move quickly and can be tough to hit. Bigger monsters do track you and are a bit easier to hit, but they take more bullets. Insects can't be hit and are stationary, providing a simple obstacle, and the Grim Reaper will roughly track you in open areas. He also cannot be killed and is just best evaded. There are a few other little obstacles dotted around, as well as cosmetic features such as the dragon that can often be seen in the sky. Oh, and harmful drops of water, because this is a European game after all. So is the game actually worth playing? Is it still something of a tech demo? Well, no, it's more than that for sure. It's not necessarily the greatest FPS title that you'll ever play, but it's absolutely serviceable enough when it comes to traditional old school action in the genre. It does certainly have its foibles, of course, you might get a bit lost in the walls at times seeing as they're mostly solid colours, and there isn't a whole lot in the way of notable landmarks in the levels aside from the corpses of big monsters that you create, but that said you do have a full map of each level that can be accessed anytime which does help matters. The Dark is a perfectly okay FPS if you enjoy the old corridor style, and that's speaking in general, not just for the spectrum where it is obviously leagues ahead of anything else that could be considered part of the genre. It most definitely shows off the processing power of the Z80 compared to the chips on other systems. There is no way at all you could get anything even close to this on a Commodore 64, not with the base hardware. In the end the best thing I could say about the dark is that I would be happy to compare it to other first person shooters of the time, all of which are running on systems that are dozens upon dozens of times more powerful than a humble 48k spectrum. To have anything at all like this on a system from 1982 is utterly phenomenal. But wait, we're not quite done. When Zosia released the Redux version of The Dark, it also came with a prequel game, 
The Dark the Lost Pages, an entirely new affair. Now you might expect this to be akin to an expansion with a couple more levels to play with and not too much else, but it is in fact a totally full new game, nine more levels of first person action and a side scrolling maze level to begin things, again running on a 48k spectrum. So you don't really do things by halves, it has to be said. The Lost Pages is certainly another dazzling release, although also something of a bold one. The side-scrolling part of the game comes first, where you have to collect the aforementioned Lost Pages that function as maps for the FPS levels to come, and the style is somewhat similar to their earlier game, the modern classic Valley of Rains, albeit not nearly as busy. It's actually quite a large maze in fact, it'll take you a good chunk of time to get through it and you may well end up getting lost. It's all perfectly good, but it might be a bit of an annoyance for those who want to get purely into the shooting action that the original game was known for. One wonders if it might have been best to make this part optional. The FPS part does feature another nice new sheen on the graphics and the play, you do get a fair few new enemies, including the big old dragon in the background this time. The HUD has been made even cleaner, and there's other cool touches like Alexander's pistol actually moving as he goes forward, that's a nice trick indeed to pull off here on the specy. A lot of things do stay the same with the game having a pretty similar style to the original, although there's a chance for some different levels now and again. The first one, for example, is an arena filled with monsters that you must largely avoid while trying to find a key that has several random locations. So yeah, it's not all corridors this time. The FPS part is good, so long as you can get to it, and on the whole, well it's nice to see a sequel to the game. That said, those who purely want a spot of FPS action on an antiquated system may prefer to stick to the original's Redux version. But on the whole, these are classic bits of specky homebrew from some of the best folks who do it these days, and the Dark most certainly wants a place it deserves as one of the best homebrew and technical achievements on the system, even if it did pretty much take 20 years for it to get there. It is funny really. You could argue that the specy, or indeed the even earlier ZX81, did play host to one of the earliest important first person gaming experiences out there, 3D Monster Maze. It may well have taken 36 years for the computer to make another neat little mark on the almighty genre, but it's one that's absolutely worth having a look at. Bye for now.